Hey everybody, you know what time it is. It is Sippin' with Sue time. I am Sue Moy Tovez. And if you're joining us for the first time, we are live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. And if you have not gone over to my YouTube channel, please do subscribe and hit the bell to get all of the latest content as soon as it is uploaded. So again, TGIF, we are chatting with real people doing real things extraordinarily. And I'm super excited to uh, roll into this weekend, let our hair down, just like relax and just get some zen on. And I couldn't be more excited to welcome tonight's guest who has over 14 years of experience getting people into that zen mode. So please welcome Cassandra Faust. Welcome. Hi, welcome. Cheers. Happy cheers. Friday. She's it. Yeah, happy Friday, TGIF. She is uh, sipping on some bubbles just like I am. So cheers, you guys. Mm. Yep, it's the weekend. I'm, cheers. This is to my the liquid weekend. yoga. My liquid <laughs> zen. <laughs> I feel like um, I feel like that's a good thing. Definitely, right? <laughs> liquid zen. That's going to be my new thing. Yep. What are you drinking, liquid zen? <laughs> liquid zen. I mean, what about you? Yeah, exactly. Yep. I've got some champagne, some bubbly. So we are rocking and rolling and just ready to just roll into that weekend. And it is fall, y'all. And this is my favorite time of year. So it's just, it, but it's also like a difficult time of year. Yeah. Cause you know that you have the holidays coming up and we roll into fall, but then we roll into, you know, Thanksgiving and then Christmas and the new year. And it's, a, it can be a very difficult time for some folks. So this comes at a perfect time to go ahead and set ourselves up with some, some good properties and some good information to kind of get that, you know, when it's stressful and we start getting into like the, you know, quirky times of, of the holidays. It's, it's joyful, but sometimes it's not for a lot of people. So exactly. these are good tools to help. So, um, for Cassandra, can you give us a little bit about yourself um, so that people can go ahead and uh, get acquainted with you? For sure. Um, so I was born in Houston, but I shortly after moved to a really small town and I grew up there, you know, pre-internet, um, I like to say. Um, and I grew up, you know, mesmerized by like the movies in Hollywood. And so when I, I uh, went to college, I studied radio, TV and film. Um, so that's what my like kind of past life was in. Um, I Absolutely. had moved to Dallas and yeah, in Toronto and um, LA, and I was do working on like 3D animated films. Um, and in 2009, I ended up getting laid off and I used my severance package and had signed up for teacher training just sporadically at the yoga studio I'd been taking at because I had been practicing yoga for a few years and um, for me, like I had always suffered from some mental health issues, like whether it was, you know, anxiety or depression. And I found that yoga had, I didn't know how, cause I thought I was just doing it to get in better shape and touch my toes. Um, <laughs> but it had made me feel really good. Mm -hmm. So um, that really changed the life um, taking that training. Um, I never expected to teach or anything. I ended up, moving to San Antonio, um, where I live. I have a puppy, a six month old little puppy. I have to introduce you to him. His name is Charlie. He's so cute. Um, and yeah, I moved here about 13 years ago for a marketing job. That was where I'd kind of changed my trajectory and really saw a need to share these tools with San Antonio community that I had learned um, that was really helping me to um, control myself, get to know myself, handle stress of everyday life, handle, you know, those gloomy times that we all go through. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, yeah, this yoga has been an avenue. So 10 years ago, I started Mobile Ohm, um, which we take, you know, yoga, meditation, um, mindfulness, sound baths, um, all these different techniques for helping people, like you said, get in touch with that Zen, um, finding that center within themselves. So that's really my, I say my Dharma or my purpose is, you know, it's not getting people to turn into a pretzel on their yoga mat or like flip upside down to take an awesome Instagram picture, which a lot of people think of yoga. Um, but yeah, so for me, I'm really, I'm, uh, spending my my life now pursuing these ways of um, showing people more mindfulness tools, um, ways to deal with with stress, anxiety. Um, yeah, finding all of that balance. Yeah, I think you you said it like perfectly before. It's just it, I started doing yoga to to kind of get better with my health, but then I realized that it made me feel amazing. 
Yeah, and, I and yeah, I mean, there's got to be something to this because, you know, I've done other exercises and yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I felt, you know, I felt better, but it was just, um, you know, I always joke the way I noticed because I was living in Dallas, between Dallas and LA at the time. And so traffic, you know, traffic can be horrible. Um, yes. And I had the worst road rage. Like even when I was like going to yoga, I'd be like, get out of my way. I got to get to yoga on time. Um, and I really, when I started noticing, I was like letting people in and I was getting a little less reactive. I was like, huh, okay. So maybe there's some magic sauce kind of to this. And um, when I dove into deeper studies, I was like, oh, wow. Like the, the asana, this practice that most people do, it's like the tip of the iceberg. Like most of yoga is so much deeper than that. Um, you know, and even when we talk about, you know, sound healing, you know, that's working more with like subtle body energies with like things that um, don't rely us to be so physical, which, um, you know, really is, is, the, is what a lot of us need. Mm -hmm. So, so tell us what is a sound bath and tell us the different about the different instruments or tools that you use for a sound session. For sure. So my introduction to can sound therapy was in with gong baths. So I don't actually have a gong myself. I worked with someone who has had like 40 years of experience and he has, I mean, these huge, like, I want to say 20 inch diameter gongs. And I would teach a yen class and he would play the gongs. And um, I had experienced, so this is how I knew something really worked. I had experienced a sound bath as a practitioner lying down on my mat the end of a class um, with gongs and and I felt better afterwards, but I didn't really quite understand it until he explained it to me in a couple of ways. Um, so if you ever see like a cup of water, like even this glass of champagne, if it was right next to a really loud speaker, like the, the, the vibration would cause the water to move, right? So when anytime we're subject to sound, um, that works with us and it goes down into a cellular level. So with some different vibrations, it's literally vibrating our cells and that allows a kind of a pro process of detoxification to an extent, allowing us to, to cleanse, to find ease. Um, and so when I first started working with him, he was playing gongs. Um, I was teaching more of a vinyasa, more of an active practice. And I would notice after class, I started getting really nauseous and I would be kind of dizzy and just, I just felt really off. And I started talking to him about it because I wasn't staying on my mat doing the practice. I was moving around in a way that I think kind of, um, didn't allow those vibrations to work with me. I was kind of pushing against them. And so I shifted how I, you know, led that class. And I was like, wow, there really is power to this sound. Um, and shortly after that, I started teaching more meditation, more of like the sound bath, which is like, and I would do it with yen, which is just kind of shifting your posture every five minutes, but still staying low to the ground and supported. Um, so you don't get that resistance. Um, so I started with buying sound singing bowls. And so um this is a singing bowl that a lot are, are really common it's a metal singing bowl mm -hmm. um this is one that i got in nepal um so when you start learning about the energetic body the energetic system um especially i don't know how familiar you know your, the audience is with chakras but each of our chakras, each of those energy centers are tuned to a different frequency, which is associated with a different note. So like our root chakra is the C note. Um, our solar, our, our um, uh, sacral is D, E. Um, so it goes all the way up. And so these two that I'm going to show you are both tuned into our third eye. And so you can do sound in a couple of ways. I can strike the bowl. And the purpose isn't just listening to the sound like you would listening to music. It's feeling the vibration. And sometimes I ask to kind of follow so you can know that energy kind of dissipates. It goes somewhere, it gets quieter. 
So yeah, this one. And then and you can also, I don't know if this will pick up as well. I'll play it close to my mic. I can just start to roll around. And it gets louder. So I'm holding it like this. If I were to touch the sides of it, I can mute the bowl. So this would be a metal bowl. These bowls are really great. They're um, usually a little more affordable, um, especially a cast one like this. A lot of the ones in Nepal, um, I wasn't able to fit one in my bag, but they're like hand hammered. Um, and since they have to get them to those specific frequencies, they can get pretty expensive. Um, my favorite bowls to play, my favorite bowls to experience are the crystal bowls. So those are gonna be a little more, um, they look like this and they're all different sizes. These are tuned again to the different frequencies. So if you look on the bottom, it'll have the little symbol for the chakra. And again, I can take the striker and strike it. I feel like it has a much richer sound. It really fills a space more. I'm sure you can tell that you hear it a little bit louder. So um, since a lot of what I do is outdoors, these tend to really hold space. This is one of the smaller ones. Um, and then I use a rubber mallet to do the other where you can pick up. Again, a lot of the experience is when you're live with it and, and can um, and can feel those vibrations. So even when I um, get to play the bowls and, and guide a sound bath, I get a lot of those direct uh, direct hits of those vibrations. I'm sitting right over the bowls. Um, so again, those are really common when you see sound baths today. A lot of them are in some shape or form different of those. So I have seven of the crystal ones for the chakras. I have quite a few of these. Um, and you can even put water in them too, and that changes the, the sound. Um, and so when you see sound baths, that's typically a lot of it. Um, there are some chime elements you can use at different points. These are called sings. Um, I have another pair that I, I prefer, I couldn't locate for, for this, but these I would use maybe towards um, the end or to mark a little marker in a meditation. Um, so you can listen to this, it goes. And again, a lot of times they're going to be layering all of these together. And again, you can use like the gongs. Um, I, a dear friend of mine made this for me. This is like an old, an, a traditional Native American drum. And these, especially if you get right behind it, you can feel a lot of the vibration. So if you have that kind of rhythm, it, it mimics our heartbeat. So it can speak to our vascular system a lot better when you have like a rhythm like that. Um, and then what really uh, inspired me with sound even beyond the traditional like instrumentation is the practice of mantra, of, of using our voice. And I was really lucky when I went through my meditation training in 2018 to take lessons of learning how to play the harmonium from my teacher. Um, so I have one setting up behind me I can show you, but let me see if I can pick it up and bring it over here. It's a bigger instrument, but this is one too for that. So this is like a, it's a little different. It's a little bit more, it's almost like, so nothing happens when I play it like this, but when I... So I can play different notes on it as well. And it's a placeholder, a space holder um, about the vibration. So for me, those are the main tools that I use um, in my own personal uh, sound bath creation or sound healing creation. 
Um, I also have uh, my students, again, use their own voice of mantra, um, talking about that energy system, even just the word OM, which is part of my, um, the name of my business. Um, it's a lot more complex than just OM. It's it's a it's a full vibration through our energetic system. So when we tune into that within ourselves, we can create sound healing from the inside out. So it would be like an it's like ah uh, and it's again finding those frequencies that resonate at the different different layers. Um, so yeah, when you can really go deep into sound healing. I, I'm actually excited. Next week, I'm going to be out in Marfa at El Cosmico for Trans Pecos. And a friend of mine went last year and said that they did an electronic sound bath, which mm. was like different, you know, frequencies you make through electronics um, to create. And she said it was really amazing. She left feeling like floaty. So maybe I'll get to try that. We'll see. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, because you do, you do tend to feel like just kind of amazing and very floaty. And that's sure. the kind of experience that I had. And it's, it's funny that you have also mentioned like using just your own voice, because my husband and I did that uh, when we were in Thailand, and we were with a, um, a yogi that was helping us through our practice. And that was one of the first times that I actually I did that, where it was yeah the ohm and it's not ohm <laughs> it's exactly oh, yes and, and we did it multiple times um to the yeah. point where i was just like and he's like louder because you know when you're doing something at, for the first time you're really in, like i don't know timid. i get super intimidated so i'm like oh. it's like timid yeah. yeah yeah you're like oh you know well, you don't really want to say anything it's interesting you mentioned that so you know that's a our throat chakra and our ability to express ourselves mm -hmm. um not only does it relate with us being able to speak, but it relates with us hearing. So it relates with, with the listening as well. And um, the word that the Sanskrit word for the throat chakra, Vishuddha, um, means, means purification. Um, and how, you know, when we learn to listen or when we learn to speak um, fully like that, it's, it's, a way of, of cleansing ourselves when we hold back, when we get timid, it's almost like we're um, you're shedding everything off and stuff. Yeah, yeah. creating mm -hmm. that, yeah. that kind of shutdown effect and and it can be profound. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The effect and I had um we just had a chat um come in earlier. Um Beth Beth is on and she was saying that she's used the singing bowl at school with her students. That's so that's pretty amazing because I've never even, I mean, again, this is all really new to me. This is super interesting to me. I've, you know, my husband went to Bali and he brought me back a singing bowl and I was super stoked about it because I used it a couple of times. Um, uh, I think it was the beginning of this year and I was like, oh, I want one. I want one. Oh, I, I mean, nice. it just, it felt so good and I felt so connected to, um, to how it made me feel. Afterwards. Yeah. And I just really, I wanted to, you know, capture that and I wanted to just, have that as part of a, a practice as well. And so um, having it brought into the schools where things are so yeah. stressful at the time, I think is outstanding. And I think, so for me too, like bringing mindfulness to kids, really having to think of how to make things tactile and fun and enjoyable for them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they are already drawn to like banging on things and <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and so I find that too, like I brought one home for my niece when I came back from Nepal last year and I was like, I don't know if she's going to get it, but she loves it. She has it on her little shelf and, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, they may just think that they're like hitting it, but it's, it's, uh, still getting the impact, getting that little, mm -hmm. So, so I have a question on um, whether you, when you have one at home and it's a personal one, um, they have um, the little like like little ring that would sit, the cushion that would um, sit on the bottom, and then you'd have the bowl sitting on the top. But I also see a lot of people do what you do and have the bowl mm -hmm. in your hand. What's the difference between the two of playing it in your hand? I feel like you'd get more of the yeah. vibration to you as opposed to it just on the surface. So this is one of my smaller of these. So I don't typically ever hold these. It's actually sitting on a little rubber ring right next okay. to me. So normally I'm just picking it up to play for y'all. I would normally have that one sitting down. 
Um, this one too, I have it sitting on its uh, on a little stand, but I tend with to the smaller ones tend to hold it. Um, it can be challenging to find the right way to hold it because if the fingers come around it at all, mm -hmm. you're going to muffle the sound. And so what that means when I hold my hand like this is my wrist gets tired yeah. if it's a heavier bowl mm -hmm. really quickly. Um, and so like having that other thing to set it on just helps to alleviate having to hold it. But for me, I like having the portable because I teach, I play these a lot at the end of yoga and I want to walk around the space. And mm -hmm. there's something about that too. If you've ever done a a, a larger scale sound healing where there's multiple people and multiple instruments kind of moving around the space. Cause that, you know, the reason that we're doing it is, you know, in yoga, we, we, we are moving through the layers of our being. It's like our physical body. Then we go to our subtle body and the more that we can still the more that we can still the layers, right. And mm -hmm. focus in, and that's what it really allows us to do is just kind of, if I'm listening to something and I, and I have that turned on when we're really attuned to something, we can't really tune into anything else. Mm -hmm. And so for those moments, you have the full attention of the vibration of the clearing. Um, yeah. That's amazing. So how long have you been practicing um, sound therapy with your singing bowls? I don't know if you had mentioned it from before. I know you've been doing so, yoga for a really long time, but for actual yeah, sound therapy. Yeah. So I would say I started working with Michael, the, the gong um, facilitator in probably like nine years ago. And I think I probably got my bowls probably like two years after that. So it's probably been about seven years um, that I've you know, been getting into my bowls. And I, I never, I took formal training on my harmonium, but with the bowls, I have a somewhat of a background knowledge in music. So I know the notes and, and um, I'm a little more self-taught in that regard um, in learning how to play them over the last seven years. Um, yeah. Awesome. And then um, we talked about how, how all of these sound vibrations, they dip into that different dimension. It's going into cellular. Um, so the benefits of using sound for therapy and using these sound bowls are not just, um, you know, just give us a walkthrough. I know it's good for, you know, just kind of um, de-stressing and with the kids, it's, it's something for them to do yeah. just spend a little bit more on that. So anytime we are allowed, are able to get our nervous system out of kind of that high stress, high alert, fight or flight mode, we have so many benefits from that. And that's the really the, the, the what we're trying to, to do with the sound bath is to get the body, the mind all into that more relaxed state. So you're going to get, you know, it's going to lower your blood pressure. Um, it helps with um, again, we said, talked about the like anxiety, the stress, but even with, you know, attention deficit with kids, it, like really it trains them to be able to slow down, to still the mind, to focus, to come into that moment. Um, it can help with like cardiovascular help, respiratory health, because um, when we get into that mode, our, everything expands. Because if you think about, we're always tightening up. So it's when we expand more, we're going to breathe deeper, we're going to use more of our lung capacity in those moments. Um, it's really deeply restful. We can get into some of those alpha, um, those like beta brain waves and we can get, um, like you can come out of it almost feeling like you had a little nap, um, on a, on a, um, like mental level, like a mental nap. Yeah. Um, and most of us need yeah, that I mean, mental break, man, for a real mental break. <laughs> And, and I always tell people when you're going to sound therapy, because the same thing, it literally is shaking up and, and your body needs to dispel. And so it's always important to drink a lot of water afterwards because on a physical level, we are releasing a lot that's no longer kind of, it's kind of like helping us. They call it the rest and digest. So our body's kind of digesting and releasing uh, what's no longer serving us. Mm -hmm. um, same thing kind of on the mental aspect as well. Yeah, so lots of water guys, not liquid zen, lots not liquid zen. <laughs> Maybe not champagne. <laughs> Maybe not champagne while you're doing the sound bath. Exactly. But if you can't do a sound bath, you got your liquid, liquid zen. zen. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so uh, can anyone do a sound bath? Um, I'm thinking when I say anyone, I mean elderly. I mean people maybe if they have a certain type of maybe autoimmune or they have some type of disorder. Yeah. Is there, some, is there any, uh, anybody that wouldn't be able to do a sound bath? 
To me, I feel like it's one of the more universal practices that there isn't, um, I mean, some of them, so for, l- let me speak, when we're speaking more of the bowls, um, gong baths can be really intense if you've ever been to a gong bath. Um, they're just a little more, especially with big ones, they're just a little more abrasive. If you can imagine, right, a, a gong, it's like metal, it's it's very abrasive. Mm-hmm. And that can, uh, I, I know for me, when I wasn't properly taught how to um, receive a sound bath. I Again, I resisted it at first. I was like, oh, that's not sound. I'm, that's not like listening to music. And I could feel my body pushing away and I would leave more anxious than when I came. And so I think as long as, you know, you're aware that it's not like listening to music, it's more about listening to your breath and letting the vibration kind of do their own thing. Um, not trying to figure it out because I would try to figure it out and make sense of it. And um, so I would, so I wouldn't say like, you know, I don't think anyone shouldn't do it, but I do think um, to be really mindful of um, with any, any energy practices, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. they can go, they can go sideways sometimes. Mm -hmm. Uh, Practice, uh, practicing letting go. Oh, (laughs) right. (laughs) Big time. Well, Cassandra, thank you so much um, for coming on. I appreciate it so much. Um, How can folks get in touch with you to book you or to get in to one of your sessions or classes? I know that you do things all over San Antonio. I don't know if you do things virtually as well. You know, how can folks get in touch with you? So, yeah. So I, through my business, Mobile Ohm, um, I teach uh, sporadically in that throughout the month. Um, I do have a full moon class once a month that is with singing bowls. And anytime I teach, uh, at our Sunday class at Confluence Park, I typically bring my bowls to that class because that space is just really inviting for them. I have yet to go there. Um, I'm going, I'm going. Saturday. I mean, Sundays at 10 AM. It's amazing. Um, and other than that, yeah, you can book Mm one-on-one, you know, sound bath or yoga sessions through that. I do, um, I do retreats and I am getting more into virtual. I'm doing my first virtual series in a while. I got really virtual during the pandemic and then I feel like I kind of rebelled against it. (laughs) Um, But now I'm getting back into it again. So you can keep an eye out for for some more of that in the future. Awesome. All right. So we'll make sure that we get your information into the feed so that folks can get in touch with you. But um, is there anything else you'd like to add before we get into uh, my just for fun speed round that I do with all my guests? Um, I just put it in. I think that oh, that was a private. I don't know if I, I I don't know if I was doing that right. Putting I'll, my, I'll get it. I'll get it into the feed after we uh, we close out for sure. Okay. Yeah. I was like, I don't know how to, okay, yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. Let's do a speed round. Uh, so okay. So here we go. We are doing our just for fun speed round. So what's your favorite practice to do between, between your yoga meditation and sound baths? What do you do between those? Like in that same round? Yeah. Well, like what's your favorite um, thing to do, if, you know, in between yoga meditation and sound baths? You're doing, yeah, you're doing so all this I Zen really stuff. Like, so. I really like active pranayama. So I do like a lot of like movement with my breath to kind of like get, get things going through mine. So I would say kind of more pranayama, active, uh, active. lion's breath. Ah, okay. Ooh, Second. very cool. <laughs> All right. So what is your favorite thing to do when you're not giving people the ultimate Zen experience? Um, either, well, hanging out with my dog and going paddleboarding or hiking. And I love being in nature. Oh yeah. I love being in nature too. I'm, I'm in Colorado right now. Uh, we're in Aspen mm-hmm. or I don't know, near Aspen. Are we just, Vail maybe? I don't know. It's it's like we passed all the stuff and I was like, Yeah, uh. it's all in the same area. <laughs> and it's just. It's a lot nicer than uh, like the 98 degrees it is No, here. it's so, I mean, it's warm here for, for the folks that are like from Colorado. They're like, it's freaking hot. But it's like, oh my gosh, the mountains, the water, it's just so freaking beautiful. And again, it's autumn. So I'm seeing the changes of the colors That's right amazing. now that. Um, it's my favorite season, and I'm from New York originally, so seeing the changing of the colors is like a big, Carly. it's a big deal to me, and so I get to see it here, so I'm excited. <laughs> a, I mean, we don't get an autumn here. Like, what is that? It's when it breaks 100? Like, Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, so what is your favorite stone if you have one? I like Labradorite. Um, it's a stone of transformation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. So one place you haven't visited yet that you'd love to see? 
Bali. Bali? Yes. Yeah. So amazing. It's so amazing. I'm ready to go. Yeah, I went to Nepal last year. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. Hiking in the Himalayas and um, Bali's been on my list, seeing all the temples and just, you know, it's very, very yogic. Hey, stop it. <laughs> And so he's like, puppy. Get it's puppy. It's Somebody puppy time. It's puppy time. You're like over time. Come on. <laughs> yeah. So Bali, definitely. If you get over there, yeah. go to Ubud. The people over there are just, um, you will feel, you will feel their energy. I will tell That's you what that. I hear. You will That's feel why it. it's, it's on my list. I want to go there next. Yes. So. And maybe we'll, maybe we'll take a, a retreat there. So oh, we'll I'm down. Retreat. Let's go. Let's go. And the next full moon retreat, I've been dying to do a full moon sound bath. Um, uh, not retreat, yeah. but full moon sound bath. So um, for the next one that we have, when's the next one that yeah, you guys it's coming have? up this coming Thursday? And I actually will be out. That's when I'm going to be in Marfa. Uh -huh. um, but I have another teacher who's amazing. She'll be leading it with the sound bath because um, I'm going to be in Marfa for the weekend mm -hmm. for the Trans Pecos. Maybe doing a electronic sound bath. We'll see. And then you can tell us all about that. But so I'll for yeah, it. so yeah. for the Thursday next week, um, full moon sound bath. Where is that going to be located? And it's on the Hay Street Bridge. Oh, perfect. So on the east side of downtown. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a perfect view. Um, it's not too hot. We get a perfect breeze. It starts at 730. Okay. Um, and it's really great, really good times. And that's on our website. Um, so. Okay. Well, perfect. Okay. So we'll get on mobile ohm. So mobile ohm. So mobile um, tx .com. Tx .com, um to check out all of her um, upcoming events and next week thursday the full moon and for beth um who's having a tropical storm girlfriend um praying for you i hope you get through that send some of that rain over here yeah. <laughs> exactly we need a lot of the rain we are in such a bad drought right now but cassandra yeah. thank you so much for everybody else thank you cheers again and we'll see you guys next week take care cheers.